Hey everybody, Scout Crafter here again. Beautiful rainy day here in New York. Um, we have a nice project today, very interesting. A wrench I'm sure you've never seen before, definitely never held before because these are pretty rare. And uh, it's from 1921. And let's get downstairs and check it out. Now in 1921, Edward Evans and George Hempel uh, designed this wrench. It is called the, now here's the uh, funny thing of what it's called. Uh, you can see here it says hand and then it's E and there's another H in there and there's an A N D and L. So I think it's called handy handle, but some people call it hand or handy. I don't know, but it's, I think this stands for handle. I think that's an H. I think that's an A N D as you could see. And there's an L and there's an E. There's a little uh, line there for handle. So how this wrench works basically it's a sliding type mechanism, very hefty in weight. And when you slide this back and forth, you could see it opens up the jaws. Pretty cool, huh? So uh, look at the condition it's in. Now you see these, these are the uh, production marks. You see, this is where the milling machine came by and, and made these lines here. We want to maintain that. Again, this is a rare wrench. I don't take any, um, I don't really, when I get a wrench that's rare or unusual, I don't take any liberties with it. I try and keep it as uh, original as I can, but I, I want to clean it up. And uh, to do that, I might have to make my own tool because I was thinking I don't want to take a wire brush to this, except maybe over here there's a little bit of area that I can take some wire brush to, but I want to keep uh, the original um, look to the wrench, all these lines, but I want to get rid of all the tarnish and whatnot. So, and there's a couple dents on the back here, but this really wasn't used much. So what we're going to do, we might have to uh, design and make our own tool to do this. And let's get to that. Now, now. in 1958, uh, the 3M company out of Minnesota introduced the world to a product known as Scotch-Brite. A uh, very interesting product. And basically what it is, it's a woven polymer or cellulose uh, fiber that's impregnated with resin and uh, minerals to make it an abrasive. Uh, pretty much replacing steel wool in many industries and things like that. Uh, it's lightweight, it's, uh, it was inexpensive to produce, and uh, they can put it in all different grits and abrasions. Now as a demonstration here, I have uh, three different grits. This is your basic homeowner grade that you might get in a supermarket. It's made not to scratch any um, pots or pans or anything beyond uh, just cleaning and getting off some of the uh, debris left from cooking. And you can see if we take this as a piece of aluminum uh, L channel or angle iron and you see if we scrape this over here it'll just take off some of the excess dirt some of the top dirt and uh, it really doesn't do much to uh, to really affect the surface too much this is your homeowner grade and the stuff you see at the supermarket next up we have two uh, of more industrial grades and uh, they come in different color codes for the different courses coarsenesses that they are you know this is a, a much uh, more coarse grade than this one this is a little finer but you can see here when we do a little section with this area you can see the difference now that it makes and and uh and what it does to the aluminum and you can see here it, it does take out some of the scratches and it does uh, leave the surface a little bit different. Here is, um, this one's a little bit finer, but it also has uh, those properties of, it's an industrial grade, and you can see here what it does. It'll take off just enough where it leaves the surface, but you see what a nice surface that leaves. Let me now you can see here, this was untouched. This was the coarse uh, Scotch-Brite, and here was the fine. And you can see what it does to the surface, you could see how it leaves the surface. So uh, there are applications for this in the restoration uh, world. And let's get to what we're gonna now use. Now normally if you wanna try out and see if an area uh, does well with a certain abrasive or a different kind of tool you're gonna use, you just take a, you know, sometimes you would take an area that's, uh, you know, not very visible, maybe underneath the jaw or something and try out a product. But here we just did the top here and you could see I did half with that fine, uh, the fine Scotch-Brite. And you can see here, there is some rust. This this is rust, you know, that any time you see this patina, it is rust and you can see it's starting to come up. But you can see underneath the rust, you can see it leaves that finish. So uh, we decided the fine, the fine uh, Scotch-Brite would be good. But And also we want to use a, uh, a medium, which is like a, a polish or an abrasive polish, like a compound which will make this go much quicker and leave a much nicer finish by using both this 
and the compound. So let's try Okay, that. so here's where we're at. I took some of this color back, and this is nothing more than a polishing compound, okay? And that's a, uh, it brings back the finish. It's got a little bit of abrasive, but nothing that's gonna put any scratches in. I, I put a little bit into this uh, old container and I just diluted it just a little bit with water to make it like a slurry. We're gonna use the, uh, the fine Scotch-Brite pad and uh, we're gonna get started working on this. Now, as complicated as this wrench might seem, and the mechanism is uh, is a little bit complicated, but there's only six parts to the wrench, which is, you know, the simplicity is beautiful of this wrench. Um, there is the uh, the main body of the wrench, and you can see we've been cleaning this out, you know, got 100-year-old grease in there, so using Q-tips and uh, the 50-50 mix of acetone and transmission fluid, been getting this so all the grease out of here. Here is the main spiral mechanism that uh, inserts into here and a beautiful piece of machinery, right? And then we have two screws. One screw holds everything together here. And then this other screw holds this collar in right here through a threaded area. So, and this is the bottom jaw. So a really interesting wrench and we're gonna take everything, we'll polish it out. We'll do a uh, quick lubrication. Now we're gonna just put a very fine coat of oil. There was a lot of grease built up here. I went through about 50 Q-tips and a couple, about 10 sheets of paper towel, getting all the stuff out of here. But we'll have this nice and clean, and then we could just put a drop of oil in and show you how it operates. Now you remember my favorite part of the video. Remember what it looked like before we started. And we are calling this project done. Uh, just came out just the way I wanted it to. And you could see, now we can get a better look at what it says here. It says, patented September 20th, 1921, uh, manufactured by handy handle and you can see the e over here remember i was talking about the handle <laughs> i believe this is a h a n d that's an e and this is a l so handy handle um and it was uh, out of new Bed new bedford massachusetts now i kept in all of the original uh mill marks for the wrench i just cleaned it up took out as much tarnish as i could you saw all that black coming off on the paper towel and, and whatnot. Waxed it, uh, made it nice. This is exactly the way the wrench would have looked when it was brand new. And as far as operation, this thing works as smooth as can be. You could see that? Just like, a, like it was on bearings, you know? And you could see the operation, how it works there. There's a little pin. This little pin sits in that groove and it moves the jaws back and forth. Let's give this uh, wrench a try and see how it works. Now, to operate this uh, wrench, what you would do is you would place it over the nut like this, and you would slide this back, the handle back, and that would tighten it up onto the nut. Once it's tightened, that's all you'd have to do. And this would stay in that position. It would not uh, loosen up because of the way the mechanism is. Uh, you could go back and forth on here, and it will not loosen up. I mean, this only way you can open and close these jaws is by operating it through the ratchet mechanism here, through the slide mechanism. Again, you would put it on here, pull it back till it's tight, and then let it go. So, is it a gimmick? Well, in 1921, I guess it was. <laughs> you don't see many of these around, so I guess it didn't take off, but it is an interesting wrench nonetheless. And look at the size of this thing, the heft, the beefiness. I'm starting to see that a lot of tools made in the 20s, that was the, uh, those were the cat's pajamas. I mean, th those tools were really nice. And uh, even the way they were, you know, marked and, and stamped and whatnot, really beautiful. Now, capacity on this wrench is somewhere about an inch and a half, you could see here. And uh, it is as a smooth operating wrench, nicely uh, made, uh, very hefty. Um, not something you want to keep in your pocket, I guess, because it's a little heavy. So in closing, today we have the uh, Handy Handle Wrench Company. And uh, 1921, nice wrench. Hope you enjoyed the restoration. Thanks very much for tuning in. Take care and have a nice day.